All right, we're looking at types of chemical reactions. Now there's five different types of reactions that we're going to look at today. We're going to start with the first one, simplest one, which is a synthesis reaction. Synthesis reactions mean you're combining two substances together to create a new substance. So essentially you're taking something that's small and making it larger by adding pieces to it. In the case that we're going to do, we're going to involve atoms or molecules and we're going to join them together to produce large compounds. Now the general form for this reaction is A plus B produces AB. And sometimes we can think, think about this synthesis reaction in different form. Think about it as people at a dance. You've got guys on one side, girls on the other. The guy might ask the girl to dance. She might say okay, and they come together as a couple. So a similar approach to how these synthesis reactions work. When you take two substances, we combine them together to make one new thing, just like this couple has formed in our synthesis dance. Now back to our examples here. So if we look at our general form, A plus B produces AB. Uh, there's many different examples we can look at. I'm going to give you the word equation for reaction, and then I'll give it to you in general terms as well. So if you look at this first one, it's sodium and chlorine reacting to produce sodium chloride. So essentially what we're saying is a metal and a non-metal can react to produce an ionic compound, also known as a salt. Other reactions can take place. Sometimes we do specific, use specific names when we're looking at reactions that involve oxygen. So if I take a non-metal like nitrogen, react it with oxygen, I can create a compound known as nitrogen dioxide. So in this case, we say that generally any non-metal that reacts with oxygen will create what we call a non-metal oxide. And these become important because non-metal oxides can be used in other reactions. Another example that we may take a look at would be this one with magnesium and oxygen. So instead of the non-metal, now we're working with a metal. Metals can oxidize. We've seen this before. The copper on the roofs of old buildings oxidizes and turns green. Magnesium can oxidize, so if it reacts with oxygen, we get magnesium oxide. So metals will react with oxygen to create metal oxides. And these, again, are important, which is why we separate them out when we look at synthesis reactions because metal oxides can be used in other reactions as well. Here's another one, nitrogen and hydrogen creating ammonia. So essentially, we're looking at a non-metal reacting with a non-metal, producing some type of molecular compound. And another example that we'll take a look at now is, remember I talked about those metal oxides and non-metal oxides? Well, this example looks at using a metal oxide. So metal oxides, when you place them in water, can actually react and create what we call a base. So in this example, sodium oxide and water creates sodium hydroxide. So our metal oxide and water creates a base. Now, you say, what about the non-metal oxide? The non-metal oxide can also react with water. The non-metal oxide will create what we call an oxy acid. So in this example, carbon dioxide and water produces carbonic acid. So those are our synthesis reactions. Our second type of reaction that we're going to look at is what we call the decomposition reaction. Now decompositions are similar to what it sounds like. Think back to ecology, decompose, we're breaking things down. So in a decomposition reaction, we're going to take large molecules, usually large molecules, and we're going to break them into smaller molecules, or maybe even elements. Okay, so just like in ecology, where we take some organism and break it down into its essential pieces, and that gets spread around so that it can be reused in the food chain, in this example with chemical reactions, our initial compound breaks apart. So our general form for this one is AB produces A and B. Our decomposition reaction can also be considered so remember that couple that we had in advance? Well, after a while, they're not so happy together, and they break up. And when they split apart, now all of a sudden we see these people individually are happy again. 
and that essentially is the same idea as our decomposition reaction. So going back to our general form, our AB produces A plus B. Given an example, we could use something like carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide can be broken down into its elements. Carbon, which is a solid, and oxygen gas. Very simple. third type of reaction that we're going to look at are what we call single displacement reactions. Single displacement reactions are a very unique type of reaction. Uh, these ones you're going to look at in more depth when you get into grade 11. But single displacement reactions involve one substance uh, replacing another substance in a compound. So we say in generally it involves a single change of chemical partners. So there's two general forms that we have to consider when we look at this because we can work with a substance like this. X plus AB produces A and XB. So what that means really is that a metal reacts with an ionic compound and creates the other metal and a new ionic compound. So here's our little go back to our scenario of people for a single displacement reaction. We can have this scenario. We've got our couple. They're here, and we have someone else come up during the dance. And the guy says, hey, may I cut in? Sure, why not? So in this case, the two guys switch places, and now the female is dancing with a new partner. Essentially a single displacement reaction. Another type of single displacement, so the second form, is where you have one substance, so we'll call it Y, reacting with AB, producing B, and AY. So we've got a non-metal in this case, reacting with our salt, creating a new non-metal and a new salt. If we go back to our dancing partners again, here's our couple, and oh look, another female comes along. She wants to cut in. And so these types of scenarios can just help us visualize what's occurring. So the females switch places. So now the male is dancing with a new partner. And that's essentially our single displacement reaction. So one person was displaced with another. So some examples of these things. Sodium and calcium bromide. So we've got our example of a metal and an ionic compound, which can also be referred to as a salt. This produces our calcium and our sodium bromide. So notice that the sodium and the calcium switch places. In our second example, we've got fluorine and sodium chloride. In this case, fluorine's a nonmetal, so it will take the place of the nonmetal in the reaction. So the fluorine and the chlorine switch. And we get our individual products. Now our third our fourth reaction in this case is our double displacement reaction. So our single displacement was switching one partner. Our double displacement is different. In this case, we have two compounds involved. And essentially, we're going to switch out the metals in each one. Okay? So it's involving a joint exchange of chemical partners. So in our single displacement reaction that we saw earlier, we had a metal and an ionic compound, or we had a non-metal and ionic compound. In this case, we're going to have two ionic compounds. So AB plus XY produces AY and XB. Our metals swap places. So go back to our dance scenario again with this. Well, we've got one couple on the dance floor, and we've got another couple on the dance floor. We can have them switch partners. Let's see this happen all the time. Switch partners at the dance, and now all of a sudden, after our switch, our females are going to be dancing with the opposite male. And that's our scenario when we're dealing with our double displacement. We're getting the switch of both compounds. So our examples that we're going to look at. Now, remember, when we look at this, we're having two compounds reacting. This is how you can tell whether it's double displacement versus single displacement. So this first reaction involves silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Silver nitrate is a, is a really cool compound because we can do reactions with this and actually get the silver out of it. But in this case, we have silver nitrate reacting with sodium chloride. It will produce sodium nitrate and silver chloride. And in this reaction can sometimes be referred to as a precipitate reaction. Okay. So a precipitation reaction can occur 
And this happens when I take two solutions. So the silver nitrate would be a solution, the sodium chloride would be a solution. I mix them and a solid will get created. That's a precipitation reaction. So that's always an indicator that a double displacement took place. Our second example is hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So in this case, we have an acid and we have a base reacting. Our acid and our base can react and they will make a salt and water. That is always the case. And that type of reaction is classified as a neutralization reaction. You're going to see that come up more once we start talking about acids and bases. Now our fifth type of reaction, our fifth type of reaction is the combustion reaction. Now these are the best. We always think about combustion as burning things. Sometimes we think of explosions involving combustion. Well, when we talk about combustion with regards to a chemical reaction, we're looking at substances reacting with oxygen. It's really an oxidization reaction. Um, but it's an oxidization reaction that involves the release of energy. And that energy can be in the form of either heat or light or both. And so if you think about a fire, that's what we see. We see oxygen reacting with our our wood in our fire. And we get that heat and light created. And we create products like carbon dioxide and water vapor. So the general form is our substance A reacts with oxygen and produces our oxide, which in this case is AO, and some energy is released. Now you'll see when we write the reactions when we're actually working on them, we don't usually include the energy. Uh, if you get into more chemistry, you might start including the energy because you might be concerned about how the energy works in the reaction. So our first example is magnesium and oxygen creating magnesium oxide. This one you probably saw in grade 9 because you probably took a Bunsen burner and lit some magnesium on fire. Um, so in that case, you're reacting with oxygen and you created magnesium oxide. Our second example is methane and oxygen. I can take methane, which is a hydrocarbon, and react it with oxygen. In this case, a hydrocarbon, when you combust it, will always create carbon dioxide and water. And this is a special type of combustion. We call it combustion of a hydrocarbon. Pretty obvious. We've got our hydrocarbon there. So we're going to look at hydrocarbons in a little bit more depth with regards to combustion. So when we take a look at them, there's two possible scenarios you have to look at. You have to examine the hydrocarbon combusting with enough oxygen present to completely oxidize all of the hydrocarbon. So in this case we refer to it as complete combustion. Complete combustion is really hard to have happen in normal circumstances. If I'm starting a fire in a fireplace, I can never get complete combustion to occur. In a car action, uh, engine, it's extremely difficult to get complete combustion to occur. So when we look at this, we have to recognize that this is a you know, best case scenario. This is what we could possibly do. And this is when we have maximized the amount of energy that we can get from a reaction. So here's one. Octane plus oxygen. You'll notice octane. You've probably heard that one before. Octane is found in gasoline. So octane plus oxygen can produce carbon dioxide and water. Those are always the products of complete combustion. Okay? Carbon dioxide and water, when you're dealing with the combustion of a hydrocarbon, will always be the products. So if we had our perfect car engine running, uh, the only products you would get out would be carbon dioxide and water. However, we know that's not the case. That other stuff gets created. So that's where we have to put in our special exhaust system that can take those other byproducts that are produced and convert them back into things like carbon dioxide and reduce the amount of byproducts that are released. So in a car engine, essentially the reaction that's occurring is what we call incomplete combustion, where there's not enough oxygen present to fully oxidize our hydrocarbon. We can't make it all into carbon dioxide and water. It's just there's not enough oxygen present. So we get other byproducts formed. Uh, the byproducts that you'll see will also be found along with our carbon dioxide and our water that we saw from our complete combustion. So our example here, methane and oxygen. Methane is found in natural gas. We burn it to produce energy. So methane and oxygen will produce carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon, and water. 
These four products are essentially our products that you will find in incomplete combustion of a hydrocarbon. So our byproducts that get produced that we don't really necessarily want, if we had perfect combustion, we wouldn't get these byproducts. But because we don't have enough oxygen, some of the carbon that's in the hydrocarbon gets converted to carbon monoxide or carbon. So you'll see all four of these products produced during these reactions. And you can get any combination of them. You might get lots of carbon monoxide, not much carbon dioxide, or you might get equivalent amount of both. It depends. For our purposes, whenever we look at a combustion reaction, though, and we're dealing with incomplete combustion, we're going to assume that all four products are made. So carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon, and water, unless otherwise stated.